Okay, so I want to take you through the features of the operator instrument in Ableton. Um, and basically uh, give you the basics, break it down for you so that you kind of understand how sounds are built and how you can build your own sounds and basically what the function of everything on this is. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Basically you've got your display in the middle here, okay? And this is basically going to display anything that you've got highlighted on the sides, whether it be on the left or the right side. So each thing that you click on, is this is going to give you all the details of that. Um, so on this side, you've got, uh, these are all oscillators, and basically an oscillator is a sound generator. So in a way, you can look at each one of these separate parts that I'm clicking here as a different synthesizer. But each one makes a very basic sound. And in order to make a full complex sound, uh, you combine these four sounds together. Um, and the way the sounds, <coughs> excuse me, combine, um, you have options on how they are combined and, and how these affect each other. For example, you could run A into B so that that A is affected by by B and B is affected by C and so forth that would be this area over here. So basically, as you can see the color boxes, um, the one that we're using right now, A is its own generated sound, B is its own generated sound, and C is its own generated sound. But D is being oscillated or affected by B. So think of it kind of like uh, guitar pedals. If you've got a chorus pedal and a delay pedal, um, you're going to sound slight diff slightly different uh, by the order that you put those in. For example, if you have the delay first, the de delay is only going to hear your clean guitar sound. And then your chorus is going to hear the clean guitar sound with the delay. Whereas if you have your chorus first, the chorus is only going to hear your, your clean guitar sound. And then the delay is going to be affecting the the chorus guitar so it, it's kind of similar in the way this works and feel free to experiment with it and, and try these things out to figure out um, a little bit more about how that works now for this tutorial I'm gonna go over here to this setup basically this way nothing's affecting anything so we could actually listen to each separate part on its own which uh, could help quite a bit for this tutorial so let's go ahead and get started. On the left side, we've got our separate oscillators here. So I'm going to break this down to uh, to just showing you what each sound is. Well, let's let's listen to the full sound first. So the full sound here is let's play a little chord. This organ sound. That's a combination of four sounds. So if we break it down. Now that I've turned these off, we're only going to be playing this one right here. So, so that's one part of the sound. We'll go to B. Second part of the sound. Third part of the sound. And you see where we're going with this. This here is very subtle. It's just a little blip. If I turn it up, you might be able to hear it a little bit more and it's not affected by pitch. That's what this fixed button is and we'll get into that in just a second. Let's get back down to here. The first thing I want to show you here is basically as we click down here, now this represents everything that, that uh, is important to this section here. So the first thing is let, let's check out what the course is. Well, of course, it's basically just the uh, the frequency that, that something's going to play at. Um, as you make more complex sounds, sometimes you want harmonic overtones. So uh, as I play this, I'd probably want my first sound to just be on one. But if I were to change it, and as you can see, it'll go all the way up. So 
as you combine sounds, it's sometimes good to have these harmonic overtones. Um, and then the fine is just uh, a little more subtle than the chorus, meaning that, that you've got more flexibility where this just jumps from here to here. This will take you all the way through it. Like so. And then level is just simply just that volume level. As you combine these four sounds, you're going to uh, be able to, to choose what you want to be the most pronounced sound and so forth. So that's basically this little thing here. Um, now let's go ahead and click on fixed real quick and see what that's about. As I click on fixed, I get a little new, new set of a uh, couple options here. One is frequency and one is multi. And this is uh, pretty simple. Basically, um, as I hit a sound, you're not hearing it because the frequency is so low right now. But as I bring it up, you're hearing it come up. So now we got this down, and no matter what we play, this tone is going to come out. Um, now, why would you want something like that? Well, in some cases you wouldn't, but um, what it is good with is, let's say I just want a little click sound, um, I can actually make a high pitch sound like this, and then I can go and I can make with my attack, decay, release, and sustain, I can make it a more click sound. And I'll describe this in just a second, but just here I just made a little click. And that could be just a small part of a full sound. So in that case, this could be very useful. I'll bring that back up. Now the multi, that's just going to divide or multiply what you've got here. So for example, you got 444 hertz right here. This would make it, by going to 10, that would make it 4,440 hertz, or 4.44 kilohertz, which is a higher frequency, obviously. And then, as you divide, this is one-tenth of that, so that's 44.4, .4, which is probably going to be too low for you to notice too much. But as I hit it, it's happening. And uh, that's pretty much what multi is, and then your level is right there. So that's how that works. In the next uh, tutorial on this, I'll get a little bit more into uh, the layers here. And then we'll go on to also get onto your attack, decay, release, and, and everything in this window here for, uh, for these separate oscillators.